After the fall of Singapore in February 1942, Japanese forces pushed on through Malaya and on into Burma. Despite hard fighting, Japanese troops drove British forces into a five-month-long fighting retreat over 1,000 miles back into India. Despite early attempts to re-enter Burma, it all failed. And it proved yet again that Japanese military forces were not going to be an easy enemy to beat. Consequently, great efforts would have to be made to boost morale and change the view that was emerging among some men that the enemy was invincible. The man brought in to bring about this sea change was the charismatic Lord Louis Mountbatten, chief of the combined operations who was appointed Supreme Commander of the new South East Asian Command, SIAC, in August 1943. It is often forgotten that the Burma campaign was one of the most multicultural in the history of warfare. When Southeast Asia Command was established, it encompassed over 40 different nationalities and included both male and female service personnel serving on land, sea and in the air and drew its greatest strength from the volunteer armies raised across India. Mountbatten gave General Bill Slim command of the 14th Army in November 1943. Slim was above all a pragmatist, but he was also blessed with a charisma that endeared him to his men. He was without doubt a soldier's general, and he was soon known to his men as Uncle Bill. Slim had learned valuable lessons from his experiences as a corps commander during the withdrawal out of Burma, during which he had also successfully maintained discipline and ensured the retreat of his men had not turned into a rout. The task now presented to Slim was to both rebuild and reinvigorate the 14th Army. He wasted no time forming a corps of troops from the Indian Army, the ever-dependable Gurkha rifles of Nepal, troops from East and West Africa, and infantry and corps from the British Army, set about training them as mobile troops prepared for the rigours of jungle warfare. Both Mountbatten and Slim personally visited their troops to listen to the officers and men who would be at the sharp end, to judge morale, boost morale, and tell them their plan of action face to face. SEAC commanders knew Japanese ta tactics were to get behind advancing forces and cut off their lines of supply. Mountbatten clearly stated in his personal addresses to his troops, from now on we stay put, we will supply you by air, from now on there will be no retreat. Success would depend on not only hard fighting, but also logistics, whereby troops and heavy military equipment such as artillery and supplies of food and ammunition would have to move and be moved efficiently over jungle-covered mountains and wide, unbridged, crocodile-infested rivers such as the Chinwin and the Irrawaddy. This was undoubtedly some of the worst combat terrain on Earth. Coupled with the heat and humidity of the jungle or monsoons, there were also venomous snakes and insects that spread deadly diseases such as malaria. And all this before and during fighting with the enemy. Slim's 14th Army advanced into Burma with the Royal Air Force and the Royal Artillery doing their very best to clear some of the jungle ahead of them by bombing and shelling. But a lot of the way still had to be cleared by forward troops themselves. Through virgin jungle they wielded dar machetes and Gurkha kukris and hacked their way through, followed by the heavy weaponry, supplies of food and ammunition carried on the backs of mules. British, Indian and American engineers also had a huge job creating roads through previously unpassable jungle. Roads that could so easily be broken again through shell fire or torrents of water during the monsoon season. Troops often waded across the smaller rivers and streams, but deeper rivers were crossed by rafts and boats built using local materials, 
Once passable roadways were built, amphibious vehicles could carry the men across, and artillery, tanks, armoured fighting vehicles and lorries would roll across pontoon bridges that had often been transported hundreds of miles to arrive at the crossing point. The 14th Army pushed forward to Imphal and Kohima in 1944. As anticipated, Japanese forces surrounded them and laid siege. The vital lifeline for Allied troops would now be airdrop supplies, and as many veterans would reminisce, by God we were thankful for them. There were also over 13,000 casualties evacuated by air. The battles of Imphal and Kohima fought between the 8th of March and the 18th of July 1944 were both gruelling and fought at close quarters. At Kohima the battle lines were so close at one point they were either side of what had been a tennis court. Imphal and Kohima have been referred to as the Stalingrad of the East. They are considered by military historians to be among Britain's greatest battles. The victory of the 14th Army at Imphal and Kohima was hard won, but it turned the course of the campaign and were crucial to the subsequent reconquest of Burma. But they came at a he heavy cost of nearly 17,000 dead, missing and wounded. Tragically, the fighting out in Burma was often overshadowed by the news headlines of the Normandy landings and the campaign for the liberation of Europe. The men in the Far East had not always been as well supplied as those in other theatres of war. They were such a long way from home for such a long time. Many were left feeling they were the Forgotten Army.